Welcome back everyone and in today's video we're going to be covering a problem from the chapter of rotational motion and this is the and this is billiard understanding question number 11. So we're going to be using some concepts of elasticity along with rotational motion to solve this problem. With that let's get started. So we have a uniform bar or that is of mass 10 kg that is placed on a frictionless horizontal floor and its ends are fixed. If the midpoint of the bar is pulled uh, by a gradually increasing force that is applied perpendicular to the bar as shown in the first figure, the bar breaks at its midpoint when the force becomes 150 Newton. Now another identical bar is placed on the floor and identical blocks of masses 5 kg are attached at its ends with the help of a light and extensible cord. So we have to find out the force F that we have to apply in this case in order to break this rod. Okay. Okay guys, so now uh, let's, so this is how the initial situation is looking like. So we have a, a bar whose, whose mass is 10 kg and it's being pulled at its midpoint with a force of F0 and it's, and this force F is actually gradually increasing. So they started from zero and they increased it. And when the value became 150 Newton, it was given the rod breaks about its midpoint. Now the question may be, why does it just break at the midpoint and why not at some other point? And we're going to discuss that exact thing. So for, okay guys, so uh, another question that has nothing to do with this problem. So just, let's just say this is a stick and let's say if you want to break it. So what you will do is try to bend it. And in order to bend it, what you'll do is uh, apply some force uh, at its midpoint in this way and you'll be holding the ends which basically means you are applying a force something like this at the end right so you'll put your thumb finger over here at this point and your index fingers will be holding uh, both the edges and as a result the rod will break about its midpoint something like this okay so the reason that we are applying forces in this manner is to maximize bending everything uh, things will make more clear once we analyze the fbd of the rod Intuitively, what we're trying to do is trying to bend the rod as much as possible. And that's why we apply force in this particular manner, right? So now let's uh, look at the original problem. So, so first, let's just separate out our rod from the two fixed ends. So there'll be a force of F0 at its midpoint. And by symmetry, we can see that at the ends, the shear forces are going to be F0 by 2. And this configuration over here uh, represents the FBD in this situation. So as the net torque is zero and the net force is zero, this structure is in equilibrium. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is, uh, let's say I go a distance x from the fixed end and I want to write and I section the rod at this particular point. I want to write the FBD of this upper element. Okay, so uh, let's say this is the upper element. So the length of this element is x and I know the force at this end is F0 by two. As a small section of our bar is part of it and the bar itself is in equilibrium. So this section should also be in equilibrium, right? So at this end, there is gonna be a force of F F0 by 2 and this force over here guys it's uh, called the shear force so in the cross-sectional view the force is going to be something like this so uh, the shear forces are like tangential to the area of cross-section but if you observe the uh, sectional fbd clearly there is one unbalanced moment about the center of mass that is from the center of mass there's a torque of f0 by 2 times x by 2 plus f0 by 2 times x by 2 which is trying to uh, rotate this element in the counterclockwise sense but as our bar is in equilibrium so why isn't this in equilibrium and the answer to that is there is going to be an internal torque at this you know cross section as well uh, which we represent it as m and m is actually called bending moment so it is technically an internal torque that stops our section from bending in addition to the shear force there is also a bending moment now there can also be like a tensile force or a compressive force which is which might be familiar to you guys when you discuss young's modulus as there is no external force in the axial direction there won't be any tensile or compressive stress so now let's try to determine our bending moment so for that what we are going to do is balance a torque about this point let's call it o so we know the tau about O must be zero. So the torque about O is going to be M in the clockwise direction. So let's take the counterclockwise as positive sense. So this will be minus M. And the torque due to this F0 by two is zero because as it's, as it's passing through the point O, whereas this F0 by two will have a counterclockwise torque of F0 by two multiplied by X, right? So this will be plus F0 by two multiplied by X. And this should be zero which basically means our bending moment is a function of x first and it is equal to f naught x by two. Okay guys, so the bending moment is first of all increasing with x, right? So, and at the ends, it is it's going to be zero, right? So it is increasing linearly, so it's a straight line. It'll keep on increasing till x equal to l by two. And after x equal to l by two, uh, as you can see, it's not going to be the same function because if you section this part, we have the torque of f naught as well, right? But we can do something. As the situation is exactly symmetric, um, above L by two and below L by two, in both directions, the bending moment should be same curve, right? So this is going to be the X axis and along this horizontal axis, we plotted the bending moment. Okay, so as you can see, um, the bending moment achieves its maximum value 
when the value of x is l by 2 and that is exactly at its midpoint right so this is precisely the reason why the rod actually breaks at its midpoint so now let's calculate the bending moment at x equals l by 2 so that will be f times l divided by 4 so the limiting force that is going to break the rod is when f naught is 150 newton so let's call it m limiting so basically when this becomes f naught l by 4 the rod is going to break so this is basically the concept behind the problem so we have to just ensure that at the midpoint where the bending moment is maximum it does not exceed this extreme value of f naught l by 4 so now let's analyze the second case okay so let's so first of all uh, as you can see there is an external force acting on the system the, uh, this system is clearly going to accelerate right so i can write f equals the total mass of the system which is 10 plus 5 plus 5 that is 20 times the acceleration of the system that let's just assume it as a we'll get the acceleration as f over 20. okay guys so now there are uh, method is fairly simple we have to find out determine what is the bending moment at the center of the bar there are two ways to determine it and first way is we can just you know take out a section write down f equal to ma in the section when you're applying pseudo force you have to be careful because if you let's say i start by applying pseudo force so so on this red block the pseudo force is going to be f by 20 times 5 right its mass so that's going to be f by 4 and it will be opposite to the direction of the acceleration and by symmetry even this is going to be f by 4 and we also have to apply it to the center of mass of the rod so that is going to be f by 2 so it will be f by 2 in the forward direction now everything is balanced and some of you may have solved it in this way right? and now if you take a section the shear force i am just directly writing it over here the shear force you might have got it as f by 4 and the bending moment you would have found it out as f by 4 times x and this is wrong and i'll explain why uh, but we can say one thing for certain and that is the tension in this string is f by 4 uh, you know after we apply the pseudo force in this frame the entire system is now at rest it basically means uh, this block should be at equilibrium and the pseudo force on this block is f by 4 which means the tension which is a real force right so it's frame independent so even in ground frame this is going to be f by 4 itself uh, or you can simply write t equal to m into a so you'll get the same answer okay so the tension is going to be f by 4 itself so now we can uh, simply get rid of the block and write the force as f by 4 and similarly even this as f by 4 as the tension is, is going to be constant right and the force here is going to be f itself and the entire rod is accelerating to the right with an acceleration a so this is how the situation is looking like so now let's say we take out a section uh, at a distance of x shear force at the top is f by 4 okay so do you guys remember that the shear force came out to be constant with that analysis and that is why it's wrong because the shear force is not going to be constant so let's just assume the shear force is v we usually use the letter v to represent it but it doesn't matter you can use any uh, representation you want and the entire section is accelerating to the right with an acceleration of a so now we can write f equals to ma so we can say v minus f by 4 equal to the mass of this part so the total mass of the rod is 10 divided by l times its length which is x times a and a itself is f by 20 so the shear force itself is varying with the distance x but we don't really care about the shear force uh, what we are interested in is the bending moment right so that's going to be in the counterclockwise sense right now uh, here we have to discuss a very important principle from uh, rotational mechanics when we say that the torque of any force about a point is r cross f we actually measure r from a fixed origin whereas in this particular case the origin itself is moving so we have to go into the frame of this section in order to write tau equal to r cross f so we can apply pseudo force so as we know the acceleration is f by 20 towards the right we can apply pseudo force uh, at the center of mass of the section so this is where the mistake was in the first analysis that is we did not consider the pseudo force on individual sections guys remember pseudo force has to be applied to each dm mass uh, on this rod so as even in this section there will be a pseudo force i'm i'm not really finding it as a function of x because you guys can do it as a homework if you want but there is no need to find it as a function of x so i'll just find it at the distance of l by 2 right so the mass of the rod is 10 kg so the mass of this part is going to be 5 kg right half of it so the pseudo force is going to be minus ma so 5 times f by 20 is going to be f by 4 so finally the bending moment at x equals l by 2 in this case so the torque due to this f by 4 is going to be f by 4 times l by 2 and the torque due to the other f by 4 is going to be f by 4 multiplied by l by 4 and this simplifies as 3 fl by 16 so as long as we ensure that 3 fl by 16 which is the bending moment at the midpoint is less than the limiting bending moment which we found it out as f naught l by 4 
then we can ensure that the rod will not break. So F will be less than 4 by 3 F naught. So that basically means the F has to be less than 200 Newton uh, if we want to ensure that the rod does not break. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any doubts guys, you can comment down below and do like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and that's it. Thanks for watching.